Three states order closures of their borders to fight spread of COVID-19. Domestic airlines suspend operations, tanker drivers to stay home. On the international scene, U.S. India approve massive relief packages for their citizens to cope with the economic effect of COVID-19. And in sports, Super Eagles Dio Ojo regains freedom from kidnappers. This is ANN News. I am Ola Jubake Ola Tunji. Kano State Governor Adonai Ganduje has announced the land borders and routes linking the state to other parts of the country will be closed by midnight tonight in an effort to stem the spread of coronavirus. Movements in and out of the state will be banned, and the governor said the decision was hard, but it's absolutely necessary in order to curtail the spread of the virus. In the same vein, Governor Yosemite has announced the indefinite closure of River State borders to incoming and outgoing movements from the state from today, Thursday. The governor said this is to guard against coronavirus. Because said he had to take action as when infected persons were stopped from boarding an Abuja flight that was heading to Port Harcourt on Tuesday. He said it was a tip-off of security agents that prevented the passenger from getting to River State to infect others there. Following in the footsteps of the two governors was Governor Yaya Bello of Kogi State, who also ordered the closure of all land and water entry points into the state. Just like the two other states, Governor Bello said this is part of efforts to cut the spread of coronavirus in the state. He introduced other measures as well, including requirements for health checks for commercial passengers entering or leaving the state, and ordered the taxis could now only carry three passengers at a time and must provide hand sanitizers for use by passengers. Buses can only carry 10 passengers per trip, and all transport companies and operators must now keep a travel manifest for both legs of every trip. Tanker drivers have been directed to leave their depot and stay at home because of rising cases of coronavirus in the country. The instruction came from the national leadership of the Nigerian Association of Road Transport Owners, NATO, which is an army organization for all commercial transport owners in the country. The directive takes effect from Friday. NATO's president, Yusuf Uthman, said on Wednesday, the decision is in line with the government's efforts to control the spread of the global pandemic. He said his organization is concerned about the safety and health of all its employees. He said the decision was necessary because the loading depot where the tanker drivers operate always had more than 500 persons at any one time. Uthman said the order would be lifted once the situation normalizes. Just about all domestic airlines in the country are suspending their commercial flight operations effective Friday. In fact, Dano Air already suspended operations on Wednesday and Aero contractors stopped flights today. Arik Air Management said the decision was taken to curb the spread of COVID-19. The airline said those who have purchased flight tickets can still use them once the airline resumes operations, which it says would be done when feasible. AIP says it is suspending service for 23 days in the best interest of the country, its passengers and workforce. It also cites curbing the spread of coronavirus as the reason for its decision. Air contractors too said COVID-19 is the reason for its decision to suspend operations. The airline says its action would support government initiatives and precautions to ensure there is no community infection in the country. Although the coronavirus is taking basically all the nation's attention right now, other health emergencies that were there before COVID-19 are still there. One is Lassa fever. As reporter Kelechi Mekalam tells us, the country is scrambling to contain the deadly hemorrhagic fever outbreak. The Maitama District Hospital in Nigeria's capital, Abuja. A man was brought here with symptoms of malaria and hemorrhagic fever. He later died and test results showed he was affected by Lassa fever. 
so hospital authorities closed operations in the place where he was isolated and the entire hospital was decontaminated. We are directed to disinfect anywhere they are isolated so that uh, whatever the product that came out of the patient in form of uh, fluid or uh, vomit once you disinfect with uh, 0 0.5 uh, household disinfectant such uh, whatever microorganisms are taken care of Lassa fever is a viral hemorrhagic illness transmitted through food or household items contaminated with urine or feces of infected mastomys rats. Person-to-person -person infections and laboratory transmissions can also occur. Health authorities have begun contact tracing measures, beginning with health workers who directly handle the case. For now, all direct and indirect contacts are being placed on the public health monitoring list. That the group C, the group that we are really out for, and those that were, they have access to the patient, access to fluid from the patient, access from uh, excreta from the patient, urine from patient, vomitus from patient, we commence the appropriate group on this drug. While we are monitoring other, using thermometers and all that, and the fear is weight the family members at, and the primary health care where he was first taken care of, very mind that it's a rural area. Authorities are beefing up efforts in the healthcare sector to stop the spread of the disease and other emerging diseases like coronavirus. They recommend personal hygiene and routine observation of safety health guidelines. Coming up, African stories. South Africa charges two coronavirus-infected patients for attempted murder after failing to isolate. And later, international news. U.S. India passed massive relief packages for their citizens over COVID-19. You are watching ANN. Welcome back. This is ANN News. On the African continent, two men who thought the South African rule of self-isolation was a joke are thinking twice now. The two men had tested positive for coronavirus but allegedly refused to self-isolate after the country had been placed on lockdown. The two don't think it's funny anymore now that they have been charged with attempted murder for their alleged refusal to self-isolate. Police have arrested a tourist and a local businessman from Ladysmith and have checked them into a hospital where they are being treated. Police say the tourist is being propped for court, allegedly failing to conform to instructions to self-quarantine after allegedly testing positive with COVID-19, end quote. He was said to have gone into KwaZulu NATO where he interacted with an unknown number of persons there. The police are now trying to trace those with whom the infected tourist might have interacted and they are also hunting for 27 persons who might have come in contact with the infected local businessman. Still in South Africa, the rapidly spreading coronavirus in the country, which is now more than 500 cases, is forcing authorities to find ways to reverse the threat trend. Reporter Julius Drua tells us the government is intensifying COVID-19 screening. The coronavirus case tally is growing daily in South Africa. Most of these recently returned from Europe. Worryingly, local transmissions are growing. South Africa's biggest hospital, Chris Hani Baraguanath, is now screening all patients with severe respiratory conditions for COVID-19. Individuals that are coming in from the community that are coming in, as an example, and are hospitalized for a pneumonia, for a severe chest infection. Right? Those individuals are now going to be routinely tested to see if we can actually identify the virus in those individuals. The onset of flu season brings an increased burden of respiratory illnesses, making the workload tougher for medics. There are a lot of patients that we need to get through. I'd probably say screening between 70 to 200 patients daily. We test for a large number of viruses and bacteria, but we've adapted our surveillance to be more specific to coronavirus. So the swabs come in um, through to our lab, our receiving area. One of our medical technicians then takes control of that sample. Uh, they document everything they need to do. Uh, they make sure that the sample is in good condition, first of all. Uh, then they transfer it into a tube. 
uh, then that would go through to one of our scientists who would then begin to extract the DNA. We use three different assays, COVID-19 N1 through to N3 and our internal control RNP3. So the internal control pretty much just ensures that we have extracted our DNA that we are testing correctly. Um, from here, we pretty much put it into a 96 well plate and we test it on what we call a 7500 PCR or Q quantitative PCR machine. It takes six hours for a COVID-19 test to be completed. If the result is positive, it's sent to the National Institute of Communicable Diseases for further verification. The next few days are crucial for South Africa. The concern now is how fast the coronavirus will spread if it reaches poor and overcrowded communities like Alexandra, where social distancing may be impossible. The South Sudan is doing everything possible to ensure COVID-19 will be put at bay should it hit the country. Authorities have taken a few steps towards this goal. Now, they also want the nation to go cashless to prevent the spread of the virus. Patrick Hoyas is in Juba. Most transactions in South Sudan are done using cash, but the Central Bank of South Sudan wants to change that. With increasing cases of COVID-19 reported across Africa, it fears that South Sudanese people face the risk of contracting the virus when using cash. The switch has, has benefit to all stakeholders or financial institutions. It can be used for cross-border retail payments through mobiles, and cuts. However, the change from cash to cashless transactions may still take some time. The Bank of South Sudan says it is consulting with commercial banks on how to roll out the products. South Sudan has suspended flights from Egypt and the United Arab Emirates over what it says are measures to prevent the spread of the coronavirus. Travel agents say the suspension of the flights is costing them money. We are here because of the airlines. If the airlines are not operating, Actually, we will not be in a business. So it's our wish that this thing shall have to come to a, an end as soon as possible. A solution has to be found so that we'll be able to continue. Cancellation of flight means we don't have a business. The members of the public here are now taking measures to avoid the spread of the coronavirus. The moment Juba is safe, but we are still afraid. We are using uh, hand sanitizers and we are also uh, having plans in case of any any virus in uh, this country. South Sudan's new government is just being set up and the World Health Organization is scaling up operations to help the new unity government fight the spread of the coronavirus. Years of civil war in South Sudan has negatively impacted on health system in the country with hospitals struggling to manage treatable diseases such as malaria and the fear here is that importation of coronavirus could pose a serious threat to the entire country. The Ugandan parliament has suspended three members who defied presidential directive of self-quarantining after returning from overseas trips. MPs Sempla Kigozi, Chizi Najuju and Kafero Sikitoleko, who had refused self-quarantine upon return from Dubai, have been banned from accessing parliament until further notice. The suspension imposed by parliament speaker Rebecca Kadaga also extends to the parliamentary staff Adrian Natukunda and Agatha Akunkundu. Those members of parliament and their aides are said to have deliberately ignored the presidential guidelines that are meant to prevent the spread of the deadly COVID-19. A four-member parliamentary task force was set up to ensure the effective implementation of the self-quarantine directive. The task force brought the matter to the attention of the speaker. When we return, international news. U.S. India approved massive relief packages for their citizens to cope with economic effects of COVID-19. And later, sport. Super Eagles style Joe regains freedom from kidnappers. You are watching ANN. Welcome back. This is ANN News. Now to World Events. 
The U.S. Senate has passed a historic $2 trillion coronavirus relief package on Wednesday night as the country registers more than 1,000 COVID-19 deaths and more than 69,000 cases. The Senate approved the Mammoth Bill, which is said to be the largest economic rescue package in U.S. history. The bill, which was passed by a unanimous 96 to 0 vote, now heads to the House, which will push to pass it by voice vote Friday morning because most representatives are out of Washington. The bill includes the red payments to individuals, stronger unemployment insurance, loans and grants to businesses, and more health care resources for hospitals, states, and municipalities. Meanwhile, United Nations Chief Antonio Guterres has launched a $2 billion appeal for international humanitarian aid to help poorer countries tackle the coronavirus pandemic. Data collected by John Hopkins University showed that more than 470,000 persons have been diagnosed with COVID-19 around the world, and more than 114,000 have recovered, while more than 21,000 have died. And just like the U.S., India has also passed its own version of the coronavirus relief package. Finance Minister Nimala Sithramala has announced extension of tax deadlines, easing minimum balance norms for savings accounts, and increasing threshold of insolvency. Sitharaman says these are parts of measures the country is putting in place to ensure citizens are able to cope with economic effects of the lockdown. It is expected that another relief package for the industry will come up soon. The Prime Minister had announced an economic task force to be chaired by the Finance Minister. The 21-day lockdown announced by Prime Minister Narendra Modi will affect the revenue stream of companies and hit hard their bottom lines. More than half of a million Britons have now signed up as volunteers to help the British National Health Service attend to the vulnerable amid the coronavirus crisis as that toll hit 465. Number of cases is now fewer than 10,000. Prime Minister Boris Johnson said the UK is coping very well under the most challenging circumstances. The number of people who have tested positive for the virus around the world has passed for 160,000 with more than 20,000 deaths. New infections have increased to 9,500 as Britons continue to flout the lockdown rule. 28 more patients died in England, 6 more in Scotland, 5 in Wales and 4 in Northern Ireland. The Department of Health and Social Care confirmed late on Wednesday evening a total of 97,000 persons have been tested. 87,000 of those came out negative. The Prime Minister confirms the ministers are considering asking London Cab to act as transport service for NHS workers. Canada has imposed mandatory self-isolation under the Quarantine Act for those returning from overseas trips. Deputy Prime Minister Crystal Freeland initially said the system would begin at midnight Wednesday with 14 days of isolation. But several hours later, government officials said the quarantine order has been in effect for more than 12 hours already. Freeland said penalties for violating the order would be announced later. And more than a million Canadians and permanent residents returned to Canada last week. Truck drivers and healthcare workers crossing the border are exempted from the Quarantine Act, and Canada and the United States already closed their common borders for all non essential travel. Canada relies on cross border trade for essential goods like food and medicine. Prime Minister Justin Trudeau also announced his government will offer workers who lose their income as a result of the pandemic to thousand Canadian dollars a month for the next four months. Trudeau said Canada is facing a once-in-a-generation challenge and Canada has now tested 142,000 persons at 10,000 per day. The country has more than 3,300 confirmed cases and at least 35 deaths. Up next, sport. Super Eagles Dio Joe regains freedom from kidnappers. Please stay with us. You are watching ANN. Welcome back. This is ANN News in Sport. 
Two Nigerian footballers have regained their freedom after being kidnapped on Sunday. Eimba FC Kundayo Ojo and Ambia Comets Benjamin Inuyomade were taken on Sunday when a vehicle in which they were traveling from Akure was attacked. Ojo represented Nigeria at senior level at the 2018 African Nations Championship and at youth level in the under-17 in 2010. Lagos State government has converted Onikon Stadium to one of the isolation centers for COVID-19 patients. It has been turned into a 100-bed intensive care unit facility for treatment of infected patients. Onikon Stadium was built in 1930 and is the nation's oldest stadium. That is any news this evening. Thank you for joining us. For details on these and other breaking stories, visit our website, annafrica.news. Conversation continues on our social media platforms, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at ANNAfrica TV. I am Olajimokyo Latinji. Have a pleasant evening.